This is a model of the new Boeing 747. It's so new, in fact, that the first full-size aircraft haven't been built yet. But when photographer Buddy Endress was assigned to shoot an in-flight photograph of the plane, he didn't let that fact deter him. His assistants created a set that was deceivingly simple. Cinder blocks, plywood, three inches of water, and 50 pounds of dry ice were ingeniously combined to create an amazingly realistic special effects photograph. Well, the model came from the client. The client is an aerospace company out of Chicago, and uh, they make various parts for all military planes and commercial planes. And it's an interesting concept for an ad because the, if you've seen this ad in a magazine, you're not going to go and buy a, a, you know, a constant speed motor or a, an actuator that makes the wing move. You know, so it's really more of a visual kind of thing for the company. So that if the, if the effect is really good, and somebody's flying on an airplane and opens up Aviation Week and sees this airplane, and there it is totally flying in the air, with, and they know that it ain't gonna fly for another year, they gotta stop and look at it. To reach the point where readers could get the chance to look at the photo in a magazine, Endress tried many approaches to the shot. Each involved the model, since there was no actual aircraft, but for different reasons, only one approach worked. First, the first place we took it was to an airport in a real situation. Uh, hung, it, hung the plane from monofilament and waited for the sun to set behind it. And the biggest problem was as soon as the sun starts to go down and the wind starts to pick up, the plane's blowing all over the place. The shutter speeds get to be very long and the plane's out of focus. It didn't work out at all. Then we took it and had it, I shot it in the studio and tried to shoot, shoot the background separate and we were going to put it together and it just, it just, it just never works. It just never came off as being a total thing. And then from there, we tried to buy a background, a stock shot, and I tried to shoot, I did shoot the plane in a very warm kind of an environment, you know, a lot of orange sun, which was in the sunset. And that was still not 100%. And so we wound up with working with the dry ice and working uh, in a total controlled environment. Well, the, the main light is uh, a big soft bank. It's 10 feet by 20 feet. And I have maximum amount of heads, eight heads are in it. And I shoot it all the time, maximum power. And half of it had, half of it has blue gels on it, which filled the whole, filled the shadow area with blue at, on the plane, as well as in the clouds. Since dry ice was to be the source for the clouds in the shot, the tank was filled with water. To complete the look of the shot, Endress needed some setting sunlight. We envisioned it as if you were, again, at 15,000 feet, and the sun was just going to drop behind the clouds, and so it was a sunset at that at that altitude, and uh, I t we tried to lower it down so that it would skim across the, the clouds and, and give us as much color. And we used a couple of heads with uh, a lot of warming gels on them, maybe three layers of warming gels. And I guess that was really the main, the main light source is that there's the sun because of the warmness that it has. The other part was just like the fill light, the biggest, the big bank was just almost a fill. Dry ice is sometimes dangerous, but not when handled carefully by a photographer like Buddy Endress and his crew. We broke the dry ice up so that the smaller pieces would go into the back more where the horizon was. It seemed that they made a little smaller puffs. And the uh, reality, when you look at, the, if you put the bigger pieces in the front, it makes bigger clouds, which gives it a perspective feeling. Well, the reason the dry ice works is because it, uh, it just spreads out and makes just like a layer of clouds. It's just as if you're flying above the clouds and you look out and you see almost like you could walk on it. Well, the, the effect is exactly the same. And by blowing on it or waving a stick above it, it makes it puff up and bellow up. And depending on where it would come up and when, the, when you flash the strobe, it would light the side of the clouds up just exactly the way it would be as if you were at 15,000 feet. 
Once Endress is pleased with the look of the shot, the bulk of his work is done. It's just a matter of, of making it just one flash and happen, you know, and you, and you see it when it happens and you flash it. And it's, and it's just, it's any other kind of action. It's just like any other kind of action shot that you, you know, you try to stop the action. The strobe stops the action. So you just got to click it at the right time, flash it, you know. To disturb the surface of the dry ice clouds, an assistant waves a long stick above the tank, while another assistant adds additional atmosphere with a fog machine. The clouds had to be sort of down, downlit, you know, and, and so it was like almost all shadow, so that that would pick up all the blue. And then when the sun, when the sun would flash, it just sort of edge lighted it all, you know. And the plane, again, is like almost in silhouette. I played down the plane because it's, it's a, only a 10 inch, I mean, a, a 20 inch model, so that it's, uh, it is not really real. You know, so you, if you show the plane too broad a light on the plane, it's going to, uh, you're going to see all the imperfections in the fact that it's a model.